hymnal tonight. Turn to page 183. My Jesus, I love thee. Let's stand together, sing first, second, and last. 183. My Jesus, I love thee. Capella. Beautiful hymn. I love that hymn. Turn around and shake hands now, one with another. Smile and wave if you're not able to shake hands as the pastor comes. And you may be seated. Amen. It's easy to love somebody as lovable as our Savior, isn't it? Praise the Lord for him, what he did for us on the cross. We've got a lot to praise him for. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. If you're visiting with us for the first time, lift up your hand. Let the ushers bring you a card. We appreciate you being in our service tonight. We also want to ask you to pray for the Master Club down in the other building. Uh, while we're having our service here, the workers and children are having theirs there. And then let me remind you of Sunday School coming Sunday at 10 o'clock. Everybody's invited to be here for the Sunday School. And uh, then let me remind you of the uh, homecoming coming up in April. I want you to be prepared for that, but we'll be celebrating 55 years of Cruz Missionary in April the 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to meet over at the old church at City View, where we came from. Now, there's another church there, but the pastor was good enough to let us go over and have a little memorial time together and rejoice together, thanking God, thanking God for all the good things he's done for us down through the years, and then we'll remember all of these blessings. Then on April the 24th, on that following Sunday, we'll be here for our regular homecoming. Bring your food to work uh, to church with you. Put it in the gym, and after the service, we'll go down and have our food and fellowship together. And the Primitive Quartet will be with us on that day as our special guest. 
Let me read our prayer list off. Jeremy and Jennifer Wakefield. Jeremy ate breakfast with us uh, yesterday, and we got to fellowship with him. He came down for a day or two. And then want to pray for Ann, and then Johnny Hembry, Nick Papala, uh, Danny Black, Rita Cantrell, Brenda Alexander, Carol Clark, Loretta Fowler, Roy Pettit, Kathy Pettit, Zelda Bishop, D. Hall, Sybil Kelly, David Swanger, Walter Brookshire, Scott Wakefield, Jack Thomas, Judy Moody, uh, Heather McKinney, Louise Carlton, Catherine Davis, Eric Stevens, Sidney Kleiman, Tony Moore, Jerry McMahon, Joe Papalardo, Elizabeth uh, Hawkham, uh, Stan Edwards. Brother Stan was church Sunday. He's here today, and we're glad to see him after his knee operation. Then Steve Wakefield, Butch McCones, Hazel Thomas, Randy Key, Christian Brown, Eunice Pridmore, Jimmy Thompson, Carl Center, and uh, Mary Dan Kay. And then uh, let me call the comp church and conference for just a moment and read you a brief financial report. Any opposed, like sign. All right, we appreciate that. Ushers, you may come. We'll receive the offering. The offering is going toward the sign. And you give whatever the Lord may be upon your heart. We appreciate what you've already done. And God, just yeah, he'll get it to us whenever it's time. Amen. Brother Jack, lead us in the word of prayer. Our most kind and precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now just to thank you for being so good to us, for allowing us to come back into your house one more time. We thank you now for... All your blessings you've laid upon us, Father. And Lord, we just ask that you bless our upcoming services, the one over at our, our old church and then our homecoming, Lord. We pray a special uh, blessing for it, Lord, and we just thank you for that. And then, Lord, we just pray that you'd be with all these now on that long prayer list that's sick that our pastor read off. Then, Lord, as our pastor comes to preach to us, Lord, just give him liberty and wisdom, freedom to preach to us like he's never preached to us before. And help us be receptive to the word, Lord, and help us to listen and Take it to heart, Father. Then bless our choir and Brother Sammy and the musicians. Father, the little church downstairs, uh, bless them. And for what we're about to receive now, Father, we're sure to give you praise and thanks for it all, for what you've blessed us with. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
troubles come against me and I feel so overwhelmed when it seems the more I try giving my troubles seem to swell and when I reach the end of Amen. I meant to uh, put this one on my prayer. I just got it while I go to Dickie Guy. We'll be having some surgery. We want to be praying for her. And then uh, we, uh, I was listening. I took Ann by the store this morning, let her go in with her little buggy. And uh, I was sitting in the car, and I turned on WTBI, and they were uh, advertising the gospel going to Ukraine. And they explained all that on the radio, and they were taking up money to send the gospel to the Ukraine. And they had taken up $24,000 the first day, and today was the second day. And the longer I listen to them talk about it, I'm talking about people like uh, Google and TikTok and Twitter and all that will be carrying the gospel. You ever heard tell of anything like that? But to Ukraine, and they've got a radio station going up over there, not from here, but over there. And uh, it's a fundamental gospel preaching radio station. And they got talking about that, and the more I sat there, the more it got a hold of my heart. And so I called Sammy, and I said, call uh, WTBI and tell them Truth Missionary pledges $1,000 to go with that that they're sending over there. And I got to thinking about the, you know, the Grenada uh, project that you and I sent $1,000 for. There, that thing's a great success. They got the money, and they, of course they went up on it because of the situation in the world went up on the price, but they still are getting the money for the Bible. They're going to put a Bible on every house on the Isle of Grenada. Well, we, we supported that 1,000 and this 1,000, but what if we get to heaven and 1,000 souls from each place walks up and says, we're glad you put a little behind that uh, gospel to get us saved. Boy, it's going to be a shouting time in glory, but I'm almost ready to shout now. Whenever you start talking about winning souls, that gets me in the heart because that's what I'm concerned about. I want people to be saved, 
I don't care who they are, where they're from. I wouldn't care if uh, Russia got saved. But I know according to the Bible, Russia is going to be a real tyrant, a, a, a terrible enemy in the end time. May be headed for that right now, what we preached the other night on Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter number 38 and 39. It may be headed for that. We don't know where we are, and God didn't tell us the exact day and time he's going to come or any of that. But we know it's going to come to pass. Jesus promised it, so it's got to happen. See, the rapture's got to happen because he promised it. We don't know when, the day or the hour, but I believe in it with all my soul. I believe Jesus is coming one day, and I'm looking for him. Bless his holy name. And I'd rather be in church tonight than to be in the biggest mansion in Greenville, South Carolina, and own it all. I'd rather be right here. I mean it from the depths of my heart. I'm glad that I got the God y'all been singing about. I'm glad that whenever the things crowd in, we can take it to him. I want to turn to a very familiar scripture tonight, Psalm 100. Psalm 100. This is on page 647 in the Old Scofield Bible. Psalms, Psalm 100, and it says in verse number 1, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Let me stop right there, and I want to entitle this little message tonight on what a happy time. I was sitting in my study this week. I got to read that psalm. I've read it I don't know how many times. I preached on it years ago when I preached through the psalms. I don't know what I preached and what I said when I preached that. I don't really have that uh, file or anything like that, but I know I preached through psalms years ago. But now Psalm 100 is another one of the very familiar psalms that most people that are saved any length of time, they know about it, they've read it a time or two or a good many times, and they're able to even quote it. It's sort of like Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Most every born-again Christian that's lived any time for the Lord can quote either one of those psalms. They're just great psalms that they're, uh, they touch your heart. I mean, I love them all, and I read them all, but there's just something about these two that stand out in my heart tonight. It's definitely a happy psalm. Now, what makes, what makes us so happy when we read something like Psalm 100? What is it that stirs our heart and moves us down deep inside, sitting there by my desk, you know, reading the Bible, but didn't think much was going to really take place in my heart. I mean, I was in the Spirit of God. I was right with the Lord, but all of a sudden, God began to move on my soul. And I want to say something about this psalm tonight. We have right here a happy time if we've ever had anything. What makes it so? We have a happy reaction in verse number one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now that didn't say jibber jabber, mumbo jumbo, some kind of man-made rhetoric, some kind of foolish noise just raising some kind of a ruckus. It's not talking about foolishness now. He's talking about what kind of noise would you make whenever you get filled with the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's the kind of noise, brother, you'll start saying and making whenever you know that you're born again and all the demons in, in this world cannot take it away from you and cannot stop you. What a happy time we're having right now. What a happy time we're having in church tonight. Some people say that's a bunch of fools. Go out there four times, three or four times a week and read the Bible and preach and worship and sing. They're a bunch of fools. Just leave us alone. We're all right. Brother, we'll be all right. We'll be all right when the rest of the world is not all right. And so, my friend, we have this happy time. And this speaks of a happy people primarily led by Messiah. And then, of course, this psalm, although it definitely speaks to our day and this night that you and I are living in, but it looks further on uh, to that day when the kingdom is going to be on this earth with the Lord Jesus sitting on the throne of David. Now, in the kingdom that is coming, true holiness is going to be a part of a happy world. Think about it now. All sin will be gone. Nobody will be interfering with the church or the God, people of God. You and I will be glorified. We'll have already gone to heaven and, and gone to the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb, 
and have returned to the Mount of Olives with our Savior, and He sets up His kingdom. That's what's happening to you and me. That's where we're headed right now, brother, and we have a lot to make a noise about. I can't help but say glory to God. And so, my friend, in this kingdom, the entire earth is going to be like one great big congregation of God's people with not one division, not with one gripe, not with one criticism. Everybody will be totally and completely in unity with the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole earth will be covered with His righteousness. So, my friend, it's a great thing to think about, and it's a great uh, congregation of people right here in this little church tonight. But you wait till we all on this earth that are saved and go into the kingdom, what it will be like then. And then he says right here that we are to praise Him, we are to bless His name, we are to thank Him, we are to thank that great King for all that He's done. When I thank Him for what He has done. So this happy time will be led by Jesus Christ in the millennial reign. Now this will be the happiest time that the world has ever known. It will be as happy as the Garden of Eden before Adam sinned. It will be even happier than that because a lot of redeemed people are going to be shouting to the Lord, He redeemed me by His blood when He died on the cross. So we who are saved tonight, we have the freedom. We have the freedom right now, right now in this church to make a joyful noise. Now you say, well, some people certain should not say anything. Anybody saved by the grace of God tonight, hear me now. Men or women, boys or girls, if you want to say amen or hallelujah, you are free to do it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Boy, I tell you, let me tell you something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, I'm, I'm disturbed by the things that we were taught as Baptist people now. Baptists are pretty close. More, more than anybody in any denomination. But we were taught a lot of things that are just not so. They're just not so. Brother, they were, we were taught in some circles that a woman was not supposed to open her mouth in church. That's a lie. Brother, that's not what the Bible teaches. I explained that once before. I won't go into detail now. But we were taught back in our young days and by the Baptists that Sunday was the Sabbath day. And we all grew up thinking Sunday was the Sabbath. You've heard people stand up in church and pray and say, Oh, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. They mean well, but they're wrong. Sunday's not the Sabbath. Sunday's the first day of the week. Saturday's the Jewish Sabbath. And, brother, listen, they just taught us all kind of things that sounded right, but just were not right. And then I got to studying on the law. I'm doing a study on the law. Because, see, the law demands one thing, Grace frees you of that. Yeah, the law demands some things that we used to believe in. You had to abide by totally and completely. But then we found out the Bible said you're not under the law. Why? Because Jesus fulfilled the law completely for you and for me forever. So the law can't say one thing about what I do. The law cannot condemn me, not one little iota. Jesus, hallelujah, my great Savior, fulfilled every jot and every tittle of the law. And the Bible goes on to say, you're not under the law. You're not under the law. Now, we are to believe in the law of God and the holy law of God. But there are other laws in the Bible that God's Word told us about that you can uh, uh, read about, but it doesn't mean that it hasn't had a fulfillment. It hasn't had a change. The law hasn't changed at all. The law is the same. It's good. But Jesus changed things for people that couldn't keep the law. I hope you're seeing what I've seen. I hope you can see how great our Savior really is. Brother, listen, the law would say Sammy K goes to hell. Why? Because of these, he committed that sin, that sin, that sin. And we were taught, we were taught now by good Baptist people that we are to keep all of that law, you know, and that's where you work. So salvation comes in. That's where legalism comes in. But brother, I'm free. Paul said, don't, don't let anybody uh, take away your liberty in Christ. We're free tonight. I'm free tonight. Glory. Now make a joyful noise on that. 
I'm free tonight. There's not one law anywhere in God's Word that can condemn me or condemn you who've been washed in the blood of the spotless Lamb of God. Everything's taken care of. It's clean. It's clear. It's all gone. All sins are gone. And praise God, I'm not answering to any law. No, sir. I believe the book. I believe the book. But Jesus is the one that fulfilled that for you and me. Now, if you didn't get all that, later on, I'll try to study it out completely, boy. And I am doing it right now, as a matter of fact, and making notes on it, what I'm seeing in the Bible about the law and the laws, different ones, the law of this, the law of marriage, the law of marriage, uh uh-huh. Yeah, by the law, the law said this and the law said that. Jesus said, I fulfill that. You're no longer under that. Now, boy, listen, that'll cock some pistols. It can split some churches, too. It can split some, but I've got to preach what I see in the Bible. Whether it's tradition, whether it's acceptable by all Baptists or not, I've got to preach what God shows me in His Word. And I'm spending hour on hour in prayer and in this book, and I'm seeing things that make me want to climb the wall. And, brother, I'm telling you, for glory. I want to make a joyful noise. Sometime I'm saying in my, under my breath, praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And all of a sudden I say, hallelujah, glory. Woo, that's good. And ain't nobody in there but God and me. The piano wasn't playing. The guitar wasn't playing. The choir wasn't, say, wasn't singing. I just got in the glory because I saw something right here in this book. It made, it made me want to stand up and shout. It's the Word of God. Don't get excited, folks. Just wait it out. We'll see. I'll prove it to you as I go along. But anyway, we're, we're having a happy time right now. What a happy time. I'm happy. Are you happy tonight? It is because of this happy reaction, making a joyful noise unto the Lord. But then we have a happy service. Look at number 2, verse 2. Serve. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Don't serve the Lord moping around pouting instead of shouting. A lot of Baptists pout, but they won't shout. But he said with gladness, come before his presence with singing. We didn't sing in vain tonight. We didn't come to show off tonight. We came to sing praises unto him because of who he is and what he is. And I sat there and sang along with you. I sing with this choir on these songs that I know. Some of them I don't know, and so I can't sing all by words, but I I can sit here and rejoice while they sing. But some of the songs they sing, I know. And I sing along with them, and I'm glad to do it. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 17, God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Romans 6, 22, now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. When we get to heaven, it's because we have everlasting life. And on our way there, brother, we can rejoice serving the Lord. Serving Christ will invite enemies to come against us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You won't serve God right and do what God says. Paul said, if I, if I please me and I don't please God, I've learned that. If I please me and I just don't please God, God speaks to my heart and I want to preach something, I say, well, I better not preach that. That's going to cock pistols. That's going to get people mad. That's going to upset somebody. But listen, am I going to please men? Am I, and, and most of them are wrong. Most of the ones that you offend are wrong in what they believe and how they uh, treat everything. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Amen. So I just get happy when I'm reproached for Christ's name. So this is when lost people are lost good for nothing, lazy people, lazy good for nothing people. They, they, wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't do anything, get excited over Jesus, but they start criticizing. And the biggest critics in the church are those that do nothing but just criticize. Lag around, drag around, lazy rascals, but they got a mouth big on them big as a world. So they start criticizing and finding fault. Well, just help yourself. If you are one of those, help yourself. And if you're a powder, pout, praise God. 
we're tired of pouters. Some of these are doing nothing themselves, but they want to criticize people who are doing something for God. Did you know if a lady stood up in this church right now in order, in order, didn't hinder the service, and she said, Brother Kay, I'd like to testify for my Lord. She has every right to do that. Uh, you say, a lady? Yes, sir, a lady, a real Christian lady has every right to stand up in this church, in this congregation, and speak and talk about how great Jesus is. Some of the greatest saints of God that helped me in my early ministry were old, were old uh, uh, saints of God ladies, ladies, gray-headed, white-headed ladies. And I, I, don't, I don't want anybody to put them down because they love God. They prayed for me. They prayed for me when nobody else would. So don't really think you know everything about everything because you don't. If you think a woman is not supposed to say anything in church, you're wrong. And I explained that one time, but I'll get off of it so anybody here that feels differently. And you know what? The uh, first time I started finding things in there, I said, man, I can't preach that. Man, I can't. I'd split that church right down the middle. But it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. What are we going to do when it's in the Bible? Throw it out so that'll offend somebody? I'm just going to preach it, and if y'all want to fire me, fire me. I'm ready. Praise God, I'm not going to live much longer anyway. I've got to go ahead tomorrow morning and have two cancers taken off my head. Hey, but hey, I'm happy. Amen. Hallelujah, I'm happy. You say, you can't be. I am. I'm happy, praise God, because you know who's going to go in there with me? My Savior. Amen. He's going to be right there with me. He holds me in his arms. Whenever Lee and my oldest daughter was a little baby, a little girl, about three or four years old, we were in Norfolk, Virginia, visiting my sister and her husband on vacation, and she got some of these little red hot candy things, like hearts, and she ate a pile of them. I didn't know she was eating them. And she got her gum, got to bleeding. She chewed, 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 got her gum to bleeding. Well, I couldn't get the bl blood stopped, so I had to take her to the hospital. And on the way, she looked at me and held my hand real tightly, and she said, Daddy, will you stay with me? Will you go in there? I said, sure, I will. And I was going to go in there no matter who said I wasn't going in there. Because that little girl said, Daddy, will you go with me? Well, every place I go and every hospital I go to and every doctor I go to, I ask Jesus if he'll go with me. He always says, yes, son, I'm going with you. And he holds me in his arms in his arm spiritually while the doctor does whatever he's got to do physically. And brother, let me tell you something, you won't find a better friend than the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. But you know what? You be careful, church. I want to warn you now. Be careful how you listen to accusations. Because there are a lot of folk get upset and they start talking, talking. And boy, this church is in harmony right now as far as I know. And I don't want anybody coming in here starting some smart edit talk, some accusation, running their mouth because they're backslidden or either they're lost as hell themselves. So, our happiness comes to us and it causes us to what? Sing. Singing from the heart is a very happy experience and a very happy practice. And as I said, I'm happy singing with our choir. I am happy. And so we have a happy uh, reaction right here. We have a happy service, but then we have a happy knowledge. Look at verse 3. No. K-N-O-W. Know ye that the Lord, He is God? That's a fact. He is God. And it says, it is He that hath made us. Fact number two. And not only that, He, he said, we, uh, not we ourselves, we are His. We are His. We are His. Not the devil's. Not your own. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. You are His tonight sitting here in this church, praise God and the Lamb forever, we are His property. And the devil can't do one thing about that. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. I see a picture of that. I see a picture in my mind of a uh, herd of sheep and a great shepherd. In John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Now we are happy knowing that Jesus is our shepherd. The psalmist said in Psalm 23, 2, He maketh me 
to lie down in green pastures. That speaks of pleasant pastures, nourishing pastures, satisfying pastures. So we have a picture here of a herd of sheep and a great shepherd standing, protecting them from all predators. In other words, we are safe and sound because he's our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, he said. So this shepherd leads his sheep to good water, not polluted water, not muddy water, not dirty water, but good, clean water by the Word of God. And then that green grass speaks of that pleasantness I was talking about and nourishment and, and of course, satisfaction. And then he's there to protect us. Over in Psalm 23, 2, he leadeth me beside still waters, peaceful waters, not troubled waters, but peaceful waters. And I'm happy that I know, that I know, that I know these facts from the Word of God tonight. I'm happy to know that there is no power, there is no force in all the world that can take this from us. So we have also a happy relationship. Look at verse 3. We are His people and the sheep of His pastor, which is telling us we're related to it. So truly, we all belong to Him. John 1, 12, as many as received Him, to them gave He power, right, to become the children of God. So it is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Ephesians 2, 10, for we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, uh, that we should walk in them. John 10, 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. They hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Yes, my friend, I could preach a while on that, but I don't have time to go into all of it. But you and I are His people tonight, and we belong exclusively to Him. Satan doesn't own one hair on my head. Now, this thing's got to come off tomorrow, and I'm going to tell that doctor, if you cut too much hair off, I'm going to cut your throat. <laughs> I want my hair. But they'll have to cut some of it off, and I'm going to come up here like, eh, you know, like, a, like some nut come out of the zoo. But you and I are his people, and that's a fact. What a happy time to know I'm his own person, that I belong to him. No matter what they do in Ukraine, Russia, the rest of them, I know what Russia's going to finally do. I've already preached on that. I know what they're going to finally do, but what are they going to do between now and then? I don't know. But I know i got a God that knows all about it. And the heart of the king is in God's hands. You know that? God handles it. He sets up whom he will and takes down whom he will. So we have a happy, a happy reaction, a happy service, a happy knowledge, a happy relationship. But we also have a happy fellowship. Look at verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless His name. Blessing God means we praise Him. When He blesses us, He gives us. Whenever we bless Him, we praise Him. So to enter within His gates means that we come into a place of personal communion and fellowship with the true and living God. That's how real it is. Now since our great high priest went into the Holy of Holies uh, through the rent veil, the veil rent in twain from top to bottom. And that gives you and me the privilege to fellowship with Almighty God any time we desire. We can enter into God's presence any place, any time, in church, out of church, in the car, out in the woods, on the lake, anywhere we are. We can enter into fellowship with God because Jesus split the veil in two. Rent the veil in two. 1 John 1, 3 Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that, you that your joy may be full. We're talking about being happy. He said, I want your joy to be full. I want you to be full of joy. I want you to rejoice. I want you to be happy. Now fellowship is a cord, association, company. We have that in our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. In 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful by whom we have, uh, were called under the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So God called us to be in fellowship with, us, with His Son. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, 
grace of God, Paul said, given unto me by the effectual working of his power that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. Paul said, I'm called to preach the unsearchable riches of God, of Christ Jesus, and that fellowship that we can have in Him. So those who fellowship with Christ are happy people. Are you happy tonight? I'm happy tonight. I really am. And then we have a happy name in verse 4. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. Psalm 34, 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. He's inviting everybody now. And let us exalt His name together. I'm saying that to you, church. Let's all of us magnify His name together. Let's all be in unison tonight, in unity tonight about praising the name of the Lord. Exalt means to elevate, to glorify, to reverence, to worship. And we all here tonight ought to be able to say amen to that. We are here to worship Him and to elevate Him, to glorify Him, and to praise His holy name. What a name. No other name can even match this. His name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He, God, has highly exalted Him, given Him a name above every name. So there's no name can compare with the name that we're worshiping tonight. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, we love you. We love you. Hey, glory, we love you. This church loves you. This church will never put you on the outside like the Laodicean church did and have you knocking to get in. You are in, and you are here to stay. You're the main one, Lord, and we really love you from the depths of our heart. So uh, Psalm 72, 17, his name shall endure forever. You want a name that'll last forever? Well, there it is, forever. And men shall be blessed in him, and all nations shall call him blessed. In the millennium, all nations will bring their glory before Him and worship Him and adore Him and, and everybody be in perfect satisfaction in the millennium with Jesus being on the throne. And then lastly, what a happy truth. Verse number 5, For the Lord is good. That's true. That's true. Amen. His mercy is everlasting. Amen again. And His truth endureth for how long? To all generations. That's true. That's absolutely true. His truth has been attacked by wicked people of all generations. They tried to stop it. Hitler tried to stamp it out, burn all the Bibles and all that. Others have said the th same thing, done the same thing. Nobody has ever succeeded in destroying God's truth. Thy word is truth, Jesus said. So the Lord is good in love, mercy, grace, compassion, promise, Action, I mean, just keep on going, naming all the blessings that God has bestowed upon His people. He is the way, the truth, and the life of a truth. Yes, sir, Christians have received all of these experiences and gifts that God has offered to us. We have them tonight. We have them available to us right this very moment. What a happy time whenever you and I get together and honor this book and honor our Savior and he has shed blood. What a Savior. So make a joyful noise if you want to. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. Everybody ought to be able to say a hearty hallelujah or amen because of what we have in Jesus. A short psalm, just a few verses, and I'm in a familiar psalm, but I tell you, I got blessed, and I said, I'm just going to preach out of that tonight. I just felt like I wanted to. Let's stand our feet, bow our heads if you're here tonight. Without Jesus, of course, most of us and maybe all of us are saved. But if you're not, you can be saved tonight. The Bible's always here. The altar's always here. And somebody will be here to pray with you, help you, show you out of the Bible how to be saved if you need to be saved. The streaming, if you'll call on the name of the Lord Jesus from your heart and mean it, God will save you right now. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for bringing us to church tonight. Lord, we came looking for a blessing, and we've gotten that. We've gotten a blessing tonight. We've been blessed by the Spirit of God in the singing and also here trying to just brag on you a little bit. 
Lord, we're insufficient, we're inadequate, we don't have the words that would really describe your greatness, but we are trying. And you know our heart. You know that we...